Welcome back to Miki. Thank you so much for sticking around. I just, I just want to say this. Today's show is going to be, um, I don't know, can I say a little zesty? Uh, you know, it might, be, it might be a topic that you'll be talking about for a long time. I do want to caution you, though, if you have small children watching, uh, some of the subject matter that we're going to talk about today may be a little bit mature. And, you know, I don't want to force you to have a conversation with your young child that you're not ready to have. But we are going to be talking about what is happening in the black community and specifically why Jesus Christ is the only solution. Not more programs and, and things of that nature, but why Jesus Christ and a strong church, strong foundation in the word of God is the only solution for what's happening in the black community. Joining me today to discuss that is Pastor Melanie Armstrong, and she and her husband, Pastor Kingdom Seekers Ministry in Tupelo, Mississippi. Now you guys have over 10 years of ministry experience, and uh, your husband, though, over like 30 years of, yes. of ministry yes. experience. You're also a local business owner. Yes. And so we're glad to have you here in studio today. And mm -hmm. Pastor Joseph Parker, who mm -hmm. is the pastor of Trinity AME Church in uh, West Point, Mississippi. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Over 30 years of ministry experience, over 35 years of mm -hmm. ministry experience, mm -hmm. and uh, well immersed in the culture and dealing with issues of the day. And so thank you guys so much for being here today so that we could broach this topic. Now I'll tell you, I'm either gonna make a lot of enemies or I'm gonna have a lot of amens that we just can't hear. You know, right, because right. what we're gonna talk about today tends to be a little bit polarizing. People mm -hmm. don't exactly know um, what they think about the topic mm -hmm. or they don't think it should be discussed openly. Right. This is mm -hmm. something you do in house. And so, um, yeah, we'll just see where it all lands and see what kind of emails we get after this show. But here's what I want to okay. do. So let's just start with an overview of the black community um, by taking a look at some of the numbers, okay? Uh, 42 million black Americans living in the United States. Seems like a lot, 42 million. Mm -hmm. But when you consider that the population of the United States is 308 million people, that means that we, as black Americans, make up 13 0.6% of the population, not a very large number. Continuing on, an overview of the black community by the number. As of 2010, according to uh, 2010 census information, 30% of black families, 30% of black families are headed by a single black female. That is the largest number of those who uh, gave census information the largest number of families are headed by black females. Second would be a married couple family coming in at 28%. And then I found this interesting, but the lowest number um, of the family represented in the 2010 census was uh, the single male family. So a dad raising his kids, and that was only 6%. 60% 60% um, <clears throat> of black households live in poverty are report having a low or inadequate income. That's such a high number, especially when you compare uh, other Americans reporting 36% living in poverty or having a low income. Marriage, we know that marriage in this, in this country is on the decline anyway, but significantly represented in the black community, 46.8% report never being married as of 2010, versus 30% in other ethnic groups. 32% uh, of blacks, as of 2010, census information, 32% of blacks uh, were currently married. 32% versus 51% in other ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about what that means. And then just kind of an overview, abortion. In this country, black women account for 30% of all abortions in this country, 30% of all abortions, second to white women at 36%. But when you consider that black women are only 14% of the female population, the amount of abortions black women are having is staggering. Uh, moving along, crime in the black community. Black males ages 30 to 34 have the highest incarceration rate of any ethnic group black male between the ages of 30 and 34. Uh, now here's the kicker, 
and this is where we're gonna kind of like land the plane and I'll let you guys chime in as we're painting the picture here, the kicker. A 2007 Pew Research study found that black Americans are marked more religiously on a variety of measures than the US population as a whole. So of the entire population, the black community is the most religious, but we have the most staggering numbers in categories that are just, will blow your mind. And so here is my question. What's going on in the black community and how did we get here? Pastor Joseph, let me start with you. A uh, huge question, yeah. <laughs> very interesting question. <laughs> I guess one of the things I would, in, in responding specifically to what you're asking, I think one of, I'd, I'd summarize the biggest problem is that we have much cosmetic Christianity in the black community rather than biblical Christianity that people are living out. So for that reason, we, we come across as being very religious. And of course, religious is that, just that, religious. It's not necessarily a close relationship with God. But the fact is, there's lots of cosmetic Christianity that happens in the black community that makes it appear that we're highly religious. But the reality is the lack of light in any given community results in darkness. Mm. And that speaks for itself. Uh, there's such a need for us as believers to really understand God's word is the guide, a guidebook for all of life and it's the key to all of life. We're not just to use it as a nice book for preachers to pull sermons out of and Sunday school teachers to teach from. It's to be a guidebook for the way we order and guide and live our lives and it brings light, blessing, and grace to us individually, as couples, as families, and as a community. There's a great need for more biblical Christianity to be lived out yeah. in our community. Very good. Now, yeah. the, reason, the reason I wanted to bring two pastors um, here is because I'm gonna ask some questions that I think a pastor watching might think it unfair if I didn't ask it of another pastor, okay? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Pastor Melanie, um, I'm just gonna put you on the spot. I'm just gonna ask you this. Would you say that in some way our churches are failing our community? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. First of all, people can't do what they can't see. We believe that. Oh. If you can't see something, you can't do it. And the way faith comes, as we know from the Word of God, is it, it comes from hearing. Yeah. And so when, when certain, certain things aren't being put out there and people aren't hearing them, then they have no faith to do them. Mm -hmm. I want to echo something that Pastor Joseph said. You know, we, we take the term Christ, Christians mm -hmm. and we use it so loosely. And because we live in a society where there's all types of Christians. Yeah. Everyone is, you know, wearing the label of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that even my husband right now, we're doing a, he's doing a series on disciples versus Christians. Oh, wow. And one of, one of the valid points in Acts 11, I believe is verse 26, it talks about disciples and they were, disciples were not called Christians until Antioch. They were yeah. first called Christians in Antioch. So there's a big difference between a disciple and a Christian. Yeah. Every, anyone and everyone can can say, I'm a Christian. You have a Christian this, you have a Christian that, and you know, it, the list just goes on. Yeah. But now the word disciple means a disciplined follower. That's and the good. reason why first Christians were called disciples were because they were disciplined followers of Christ. Wow. They were only given the name Christians as a nickname mm -hmm. because they acted so much like wow. Christ. And so it seems like in the black community, we, we have taken that nickname and almost become what we would call cultural Christians. We're Christians because it's just a part of our environment. You know, right. I remember my husband and I were missionaries for a long time. And so we would travel from uh, college campus to college campus to uh, evangelize and to help college groups establish Christian organizations on campus. And we met one kid in the student union and he's a black guy in the student union. And um, most of the time on a college campus, you run up to someone or you run into someone who doesn't know the Lord and they claim to be an atheist. You know, if they're white, you tend to accept that. OK, right. you know, they probably are unchurched and you expect that. But if they're black, you just there's no way there's no I know, you know, what's right. I know, right. you know, what's right. And I'll never forget us walking up to this guy and just walking through the student union 
And I just wanted, just a little experiment in my brain. I wanted to see how far I would get by just approaching him directly. And I mm -hmm. said to him, do you know what it means to be a Christian? And he said, oh, well, you know, I go to church and everything. And I said, I said do you think that that's all it takes? You know, and the, and the conversation continued on, but here is what I find. Most people think that if they clock in on Sunday mm -hmm. or if they've had that prayer conversion, and I don't even know if you would call it a conversion, they think they're okay. What's mm -hmm. the danger in that, Pastor Joseph? Well, I, I guess I would echo that you find a lot, a lot of that in that, you know, it, but it's important to know that like, Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to the airport makes you an airplane. You know, right. it, it's That's important to know good. that it's important that we understand it's not so much a religion. It's not just a matter of joining something. It's, it's coming into a new relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and having encountered Christ in, a, in an intimate way. And there are lots of people that have gone through the motions. They've been raised going through the motions and they've seen that and they feel like, well, that's what it is. And, and Oftentimes we think that, well, if you go through the motions, it doesn't matter what else you do as long mm -hmm. as you've been through the motions. And I recall years ago running to a young man that basically seemed to think of himself as a Christian thief. He said, wow. I pray before I steal. <laughs> well, never You're heard that before. You're not making that up. No, that was true. <laughs> that was true. I was actually witnessing on near a college, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, a college campus, and a young man said, I pray before I steal. And I, I didn't mean to be rude, but I laughed and never heard that one before. And I said, well, you pray the Lord will help you steal? He said, no, I pray I won't get hurt when I steal. Wow. Well, the reality wow. is he's <laughs> wasting his time That's because right. the fact is God's, God's word does not line up with everything. Just because you call yourself Christian doesn't make you Christian. Right. Yeah. It's a matter of knowing Christ, but also living biblically has to do with lining up your life with the guidance and the counsel of God's word. And so certain things you can't mix with your faith. Uh, if a person decides, well, I'm going to live this lifestyle, but I'm going to be a Christian too, can't do that. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you can't be a Christian thief. can't be a Christian prostitute. Right. Uh, and so it's important to know that it has to do with knowing Christ, but also following Christ yeah. in the way we, that we live our life day by day. Absolutely. Now that brings me back to what you were saying, Pastor Melanie, because you mentioned uh, discipleship. Right. That is something that is... Uh, what is that in, in, in the black church today, in the black community? Because really, I think a lot of pastors, and, and this with utmost respect, I think a lot of pastors think that their job is done at 12 noon on Sunday. You know, I've given my sermon, I've labored in the word all week, and it's 12 o'clock, I'm going to have my Sunday supper, and I'm going to call it a day. So what do you think, how do we begin to rally pastors to make disciples. I love the point you made about the difference between being a disciple and just wearing the name, you know, of a Christian. How do we awaken pastors to say, you've got to get your hands dirty. This, you know, ministry is not one of those cut and dry, you put in your hours here and then you're done. It's almost like 24 seven, is it not? Oh yes, it, you, you never take off your hat in that area. And one of, one of the things that I've observed, I'm not originally, originally from the South, but one of the things that, in my opinion, I've observed as far as pastoring is that it, it, it's actually a calling. It's not an mm. occupation. Yeah. It's, just, it's not something that you do out of a tradition or because someone said that there is a position open. And so what I, what I see are pastors or men, um, people in that position that is not an actual calling of God. Wow. Um, there has to be, there, there has to be a real calling there. First of all, there has to be a real conviction there. And not only that, uh, a pastor is only an under shepherd. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is the chief shepherd, right? A pastor is only the under shepherd. And in order for a pastor to under shepherd, shepherd the people, then they have to hear what the chief shepherd is saying. That's yeah. right. So there so has important. to be a relationship there. Yeah. And so if you have a disconnect there, it's no wonder yeah. that they're not speaking the truth. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the people are not hearing the truth. That's so good. And, and, and inevitably they're not, they can't do what they can't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now if there's, you know, maybe a pastor kind of watching right now and, and maybe this is like a novel idea discipling and, and, you know, getting in there and really walking alongside with people and, and having, you know, community and fellowship. 
Um, Pastor Joseph, how, how, does, how does that start to happen in, in today's churches? Well, I think clearly one of the huge needs in the church as a whole is to really, number one, to really point out the huge need for biblical teaching. Now, teaching and preaching are both very important to the life of the church, and right. most people identify with preaching. And, for example, the busiest time on Sunday morning for the church is, of course, 11 o'clock yeah. <laughs> in terms of people coming out and hearing a good message and then going, eating their tater salad or whatever in the <laughs> afternoon. But the fact is it's important that teaching happen as well. And the fact is the teaching program is probably as important, if not more important, than the preaching. Right. Because preaching, by and large, is, is to be largely evangelistic. It, and they, they really mix together. But a whole lot more teaching needs to happen than many times is happening in churches. And teaching about practical ways to live out the biblical preaching and teaching that yes. we're doing. Lots of people, for example, will hear a message that may stir their heart on Sunday morning, but it has, doesn't have a whole lot to do with the struggles they're going through through the week, doesn't give them instruction about the struggles they're going through in the week, and it doesn't touch that much. And so it may not even really challenge or convict them necessarily. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may, but teaching helps you to understand this is how you take what the Word of God says and live it out. Yeah. That's where yeah. lots of people are missing because yeah. they're not living it out. So you may have a person that goes to church on Sunday morning, but then the, two days later they go out and have an abortion. Wow. Or maybe three days later they go out and this man, he goes to church every Sunday, but he, he's not married, but he has a girlfriend over here. And he's got another one over here that's pregnant. And well, again, that doesn't line up with the faith he's supposed to be learning, and out, learning about and living. Mm -hmm. right. So it's critical that we're teaching a faith that touches every part of our life and he teaches us how to honor God in every part of our lives. It shouldn't be a huge disconnect between the way I live throughout the week and what I'm learning and growing through on Sunday morning as well. It right. seems like there has always been like, I think the tradition in the black church is to have an emotional, uh, what mm -hmm. we consider a fire driven experience on mm -hmm. Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you know, if someone were to get up and to soundly teach the word without creating that emotional, you know, that it's, it's almost like the cheerleader, you know, mm -hmm. kind of making the people show that they're right. into it. Yeah. Then it's like the congregation has been conditioned to feel like that service was a failure. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't believe we came because I didn't get anything out of that because it's, it, it's become less of, you know, teaching sound doctrine and more of like rallying the people. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about abortion, and, uh, and we're going to talk about fatherlessness in the black community. Make sure you stick around for that. Miki's back in two minutes. Mm -hmm. 